Okay, welcome to the Euro 2020, 20, 2020, 21? Is it 2020? Is it 2021? Who knows? Who cares? But it's game day. What's the first match? Italy versus Turkey. But I thought I'd do a prediction video. And I did start this about 10 minutes, well, about half an hour ago. And I thought, I'll do some fancy editing. I'll make sure it's all perfect and read a script. That's a load of shite. I'm just going to talk for a bit. <laughs> yes, so we've got Turkey versus Italy. I've got a few notes I made when I was, when I was stupidly going to do a script. This is, it's better off the cuff, I think. So what have Turkey got? Right, they've done, well, they've got a new coach, haven't they? They've got, well, they've got their old coach back, Senor Gunes. He returned in 2019. He was the guy who got them to the World Cup semi-finals in 2002 in Japan and Korea. Let me show you. Yeah, that was him. Trabs on Spores, old keeper, uh, 69. So fairly old. Could be the Roy Hodgson of Turkey, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, who else have they got? Oh, they've got a very good, strong, young team, though. Their defence is particularly good. I think in qualifying in Group H, they came second to France and only let in three goals. That's pretty good for the qualifying. What else about Turkey? Well, they are playing in Italy for the first match, so in Rome with 25% fans capacity there. That's good, good for the game, but I don't think it will help Turkey. Their second two games are in Baku, in Azerbaijan. Not sure why there are games in Azerbaijan, because they're not even in the tournament, but there you go. Wouldn't be to do with money, would it? <laughs> um, so I think there'll be better games for them and I expect Turkey to come second in the group but I think Italy at the moment might be too much for them who knows they could pull off a surprise I know you can get 7-1 to one for Turkey to win I put a daft tenor on it as well just in case but that's more like my heart saying that than my head star player Hakan Kalanoglu said that very well he's 27 number 10 for AC Milan at the moment he's pretty good at crossing a ball from the left I believe cuts in but he's also interchangeable on the left and right what about the Azzurri, the Italians? Four times world champions. I wish we were. <laughs> but they have not won the Euros since 1968, so quite some time for them, really. But Roberto Mancini is now in charge, and they've gone 27, 28, 27. Just checks his notes quickly. 27 games unbeaten under him. I think they've only lost two or three times, so that the hopes are quite high because they didn't qualify for the World Cup in 2018, which was a bit embarrassing, although we've had our embarrassments over the time. What else? Yep, he's actually ranked at the moment, according to my iPad, as the highest win rate of any Italian manager in history. But he's only played 32 games, so plenty of time. Their star player, probably the one to look out for for me is, what's his name, Jorginho from Chelsea, the midfielder. They've got a packed midfield. Who is it? Let me look at the team list. Yeah, Nicola Barella, Marco Verratti, and Manuel, Manuel? Manuel Locatelli. So yeah, good midfield, good strong midfield. I think Jorginho was born in Italy but he's a naturalised Italian, so it's handy to have. What else do we have about them? That's about it for, for Italy, really. The Turkey lineup. they play a 4-1-4-1 formation with uh, Ugukan Kashir, shielded by two banks of 4 and 5 in the midfield. Actually, that's 4 or 5 in the defence, because he's the keeper. <laughs> but, <laughs> what do I know about Turkish football? Who knows? This is why I thought it'd be better just to record and not even bother to enter. Enter, even edit, even so I can have ums, ers, enters, and whatever I want. What else do they have? The lineup, uh, yeah, cashier in goal, four one four one with Yilmaz up front on his own. They've had no injury problems at all, I believe. Turkey, let me check. Yep, a complete squad. So that, that's always a good start. If you can get the team functioning together in any tournament, they could go a long way. How about Italy? They've had a few injury setbacks. Um, Stefano Sensi, he was withdrawn earlier in the week. Matteo Pessina came in for him. Who else do we have? Oh, Lorenzo Pellegrini, he's picked up an injury. He's been ruled out. I didn't know that. Good try make notes on these things, really, isn't it? Lineup is 4 3 3. I, I do like a 4 3 3, I must admit. Always good for attacking in the midfield. As I said, uh, Immobile, if he can perform as well as he does in his domestic league, he could be the man for the Golden Boot. Depends how well they're doing. Doing? <laughs> This is great. No editing for required. This is fantastic. So the form guide, Turkey, one draw, one draw, one. Easy for you to say. So that's not bad. They're on a good form, unbeaten at the moment in six. That's five, though. Italy, though, the last five games, one, 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 one. Hi, caramba. I didn't realise Italy were going to be this strong. I thought they were a bit of a, an outside choice. But now the more I've read about them today, I think they could be very much worth a bet. You can get eight to one on Italy to win the tournament. Same as Germany, so probably not worth... Well, that probably is worth it, actually. Probably is worth a little bit of money on them. What else do we know? So, yeah, well, 
So let's go to my prediction. Now my heart says Turkey, and as I said, I did put a little bit of money on them at seven to one. Two horse races, not bad. My head says no chance. It's Turkey one, Italy two. I do think Turkey could even score first, but I think they'll be very mean in defending Italy. The midfield probably too much for them. Um, the young defence, but could be overwhelmed. But if they play well, they could do it. But I think, honestly, Turkey one, Italy two. I should really talk about tomorrow's fixtures as well, because there are three matches tomorrow. You've got Group A, Wales versus Switzerland. I'll do this quickly. I think that's going to be a 1-1 draw, scrappy draw. Wales, come from, Wales probably come from behind. <laughs> no, we're not talking about sheep this time. It's football. They come from behind. Um, the Swiss could probably even nick it. I don't see Wales being as good as they were in previous tournaments. I, I know that they're hyping themselves up, but I don't really see it. Um, in Group B, you have Denmark versus Finland. I see that as 1-0 to Denmark. Don't see Finland getting anything from this tournament. Um, even Timu Puki, their striker, um, is he still at Norwich? I think so. He's out due to an ankle, an ankle, ankle injury. <laughs> this is great. He's out due to an ankle injury. Um, the other match is Group B, Belgium, Russia. That's Roberto Martinez, is the manager of Belgium now. They are obviously one of the favourites. France, as what was his name, Arsene Wenger called them, are super favourites for some reason. I mean, they will be hard to beat. Belgium are always the perennial favourites over the last few tournaments, but. I don't know, I, I don't think they're going to do too well in the tournament as a whole. Well, they'll get to at least the quarters. But I think as a group, they've got an easy group. Russia are nothing really special. They played well in 2018 in Russia for the World Cup. But I think this could be a statement win for Belgium. A good 3-0, maybe more. Okay, I'm going to come back on Sunday with more video. Maybe. Because there's a huge game on Sunday. Yes, it's Hartlepool United versus Stockbound Cup. Stock point? <laughs> that sounds like a really cheap pound shop. Anyway, it's Hartlepool United versus Stockport County on Sunday, 3 pm, local time kickoff. Not your local, my local. Playoffs, semi final, could be football league status, two more games to win. And the other, other game, of course, is England versus Croatia. So maybe I'll predict that and a few other matches then. Okay, signing off from the desert. See you on Sunday.